Stefania Sandrelli is an Italian actress born on June 5, 1946, in Viareggio. She has notably worked with directors Pietro Germi, Bernardo Bertolucci, Eder Scola, Mario Monticelli, Luciano Sals, Gabrielle Macino and Tinto Brass. As a child, Stefania Sandrelli danced and learned to play the accordion. She was 14 and a half years old when she won the Miss Cinema Beauty pageant in her hometown, Viareggio, then made on November 1960 the cover of the news newspaper Loire, which opened the doors of the cinema to her. These are my top 10 movies for Stefania Sandrelli. At number 10. Somewhere Beyond Love, 1974. Cinematography by Luigi Cuvillar. Desire List, from the great filmmaker who was Comencini, a movie that takes advantage of Gemma's perfect harsh features. Two factory workers living in northern Italy form a romantic connection. The woman, torn between the freedoms of the North and her traditional Sicilian values, slowly allows herself to love. A working-class drama. Two lovers try to bridge the culture gap between them, he is from the North, atheist, anarchist communist, she is from Sicily, Catholic and very traditionalist. But it is something else that is the real menace. Comencini and Kuvailer photography their ugly and lethal environment as it was the most beautiful ever, it is their world, and they make it romantic. Interesting glimpses on the vanished communist subculture which gave their dignity to the working class then. At number 9. Alfredo, Alfredo, 1972. As an Italian bank clerk who's pursued, married, and mangled by a beautiful hysteric, Stefania Sandrelli, Mr. Hoffman plays the kind of character who can't even kick a stone in the road without injuring himself. Of course, his marriage is martyrdom, and divorce is as difficult as a presidential impeachment. The main problem with this picture is that Pietro Germi, the director, has made it, brilliantly, twice before. His divorce, Italian style and seduced and abandoned superbly satirized the cruelty of the Italian marital laws before divorce became legal in that country. Alfredo is a rather diluted version of its predecessors, clearly, Mr. Jeremy has gone over the same material too often. The other problem is that Dustin Hoffman isn't Italian. At number 8. A Woman in the Mirror, 1984. Fabio and Manuela know each other about the picturesque carnival of Ivrea, famous for its Battle of Orange, and start an intense erotic relationship. The meeting leads to three days of senseless and unbridled love, of discoveries and confessions, the two perfectly know that they will leave, and this leads them to the search for the most complete transgression. But even the battle with oranges has a limit, Fabio and Manuela will leave the city, to return to their lives, aware of a new wealth of experience gained. At number 7. Seduced and Abandoned, 1964. When Anise, Stefania Sandrelli, has a brief affair with her sister's fiancé, Peppino, it is only a matter of time before her traditional parents discover the truth. Her father, Sicilian minor Vincenzo, Saro Urzi, is furious when he finds out about the tryst. After berating his daughter and her lover, Vincenzo embarks on a farcical journey to protect his family's reputation by convincing Peppino to marry Anise instead of her sister Madeld, but there are more than a few complications. At number 6. The Conformist, 1970. Marcello Clarissi, Jean-Louis Trintignant, is a member of the secret police in Mussolini's fascist Italy. He and his new bride, Giulia, Stefania Sandrelli, travel to Paris for their honeymoon, where Marcello also plans to assassinate his former college professor Luca Quadri, Enzo Tarasio, an outspoken anti-fascist living in exile. But when Marcello meets the professor's young wife, Anna, Dominique Sanda, both his romantic and his political loyalties are tested. At number 5. I Knew Her Well, 1965. Following the gorgeous, seemingly liberated Adriana as she chases her dreams in the Rome of La Dolce Vita, I Knew Her Well is at once a delightful immersion in the popular music and style of Italy in the 60s, and a biting critique of its sexual politics and the culture of celebrity. Over a series of intimate episodes, just about every one featuring a different man, a new hairstyle, and an outfit to match, the unsung Italian master Antonio Petrangeli, working from a script he co-wrote with Eder Scola, composes a deft, Soraya-comic character study that never strays from its complicated central figure. I knew her well as a thrilling rediscovery, by turns funny, tragic, and altogether jaw-dropping. At number 4. Jamin Jamin, 1992. Jose Luis, Jordi Mala, 
has a cushy corporate job at the lingerie factory his mom, Conchita, Stefania Sandrelli, owns. Jose Luis makes the acquaintance of Silvia, Penelope Cruz, a beautiful laborer on the underwear assembly line, and he is instantly lovestruck. When he announces his intention to marry this blue-collar woman, Conchita is quite displeased, so she enlists the hunky role, Javier Bardem, to take Silvia's mind off her son. The plan works until Conchita also falls for role. At number 3. Police Python 357, 1976. A tough but honest cop must clear his name after a corrupt colleague implicates him in a murder in this French thriller. Pharaoh is a hard-as-nails police detective who is attracted to a beautiful woman named Sylvia. Sylvia, however, is having an affair with Gane, who happens to be Pharaoh's superior on the force. Gane happens to be married to Therese, who is handicapped. Sylvia is found murdered, and Pharaoh is assigned to investigate. Pharaoh is convinced that Gane killed Sylvia because she wanted to end their relationship, but to his dismay, Pharaoh discovers that the killer has placed a number of false clues that point the blame toward Pharaoh. At number 2. Divorce Italian Style, 1961. Ferdinando Cefalu, Marcello Mastroianni, is desperate to marry his cousin, Angela, Stefania Sandrelli, but he is married to Rosalia, Daniela Rocca, and divorce is illegal in Italy. To get around the law, he tries to trick his wife into having an affair so he can catch her and murder her, as he knows he would be given a light sentence for killing an adulterous woman. He persuades a painter to lure his wife into an affair, but Rosalia proves to be more faithful than he expected. At number 1. We All Loved Each Other So Much, 1974. During World War II, Antonio, Nino Manfredi, Gianni, Vittorio Gassman, and Nicola, Stefania Sandrelli, are activists fighting for Italy's liberation from Nazi occupation. When the war ends and their ideals must change, the three men take different life paths. Antonio and Nicola incorporate their beliefs into adulthood, whereas Gianni takes a more affluent job as a lawyer's assistant. When the group reunites after several decades, their discourse unearths hostility and unsettling realizations. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and always stay tuned.